In Little Hope's anticlimactic ending, it's revealed that the entire game has been set inside Anthony's mind, as he attempted to cope with suddenly being thrust into the setting of his family's deaths some 40 years earlier. All of the time travel, all of the monsters, all of the weird notes around town pointed to something sinister going on with the Reverend. All of it was in Anthony's head. This is reflected in the happy and sad endings that the game offers. In the sad ending, he's so traumatized by the idea that his family was murdered by the evil Megan, he kills himself, if he has a gun. In the happy ending, he realizes that Reverend Carson manipulated and abused Megan, and likely drove her to setting the fire that killed the family. Anthony's fate comes down to a decision. Does he blame Megan for the death of his family and then fall into despair, killing himself if he has a gun? Or does he realize that Megan was driven to the crime by her abuse at the hands of the Reverend and forgive her, allowing himself to move on? The problem at the core of both of these endings is that they're based on a lie. It's taken as a matter of faith in both of the main endings that Megan started the fire, and it's just a question of why she did it that determines her fate. But as Secret 50 proves, I made a whole video about it, Megan wasn't responsible for the fire. It really was an accident, and Anthony was ultimately responsible for it because he left a flame unattended. Think about it. What evidence is there for Megan having intentionally set the fire other than Anthony's dream at the start of the game? The only reference to the events of the fire we get in the game is a newspaper article confirming that the fire was started by a child's toy. In Anthony's dream, we see it fall over suspiciously, but there's no evidence that such a thing actually happened. Yes, the doll started the fire, but it could have been innocently laid flat on the counter with its hair accidentally too close to the burner. So let's say that the truth is that the fire was an accident and Anthony was responsible for it. How would we act on that in the game? And what would the result be? For the answer, we go to the final flashback, in which the player gets to decide which ending they want. In order to unlock an ending based on the true facts of the case, the player has to do two things. First, Abraham has to be told there's something wrong in this town. This represents the idea that everything that's happening is a lie. Then, when talking to the judge, they have to insist that he burn the doll, which is a reference to what actually happened the night his family died. It wasn't something Megan did on purpose. A doll just burned. What happens after the doll is burned in the fantasy? The brazier it was on falls over, sets the courthouse on fire, and burns everyone inside to death. At this moment, Anthony's fantasy and the game's true story dovetail perfectly. Andrew's avatar causes the doll to be burned. Then there's an accident, and the building burns down, killing everyone. This is a perfect thematic replay of Anthony's family's death, re-establishing that this is the most appropriate resolution to the game. Also, let's not overlook the importance of this ending literally wrapping up with the entire fantasy world being destroyed in fire which should serve to tell Anthony that it was all an illusion. Now, at first, this seems like a pretty rough ending. Anthony goes downstairs, everyone gets killed, and then he puts a gun to his head. Then something strange happens. Melissa, which is what I call the third version of Megan, walks out of the house and stops him from shooting himself. Then her facade disappears, and she's revealed to be Megan, exactly as she looked on the night she died. This right here is the true ghost of Little Hope. So, how do we know she's actually a ghost and not just part of Anthony's extended delusion? The best evidence for it is the fact that the game doesn't go out of its way to refute this theory the way it does every other supernatural element. Let's take a look at the game's ending montage and compare what we saw happen with what actually happened. Here they're showing Anthony alone in the bus. He's alone after the wreck. He's arguing with himself on the road. He's confusing Vince in the bar, walking over a not-at-all-destroyed bridge, shooting at Vince, yelling at him through the door, and being seen by him at the mill. This ending clearly demonstrates that the destroyed town, the five people, and the monsters are all fabrications of Anthony's mind. Which leads to the question, what's missing from that list? What important event in the story is left entirely out of the montage? That's right, it's the bus crash. We don't see what really happened when the bus skidded and rolled onto its side. It would have been easy to do, just show an empty road and have the bus suddenly swerve and roll. They didn't do that, however. And why not? Perhaps because doing so would have been a lie. Every other fake thing we see is a product of Anthony's delusion, so the developers show us what was really happening at the time. Is it possible the reason they didn't show us what really happened in the crash is because what really happened is that Megan's ghost was standing in the middle of the road, but Anthony's burgeoning madness created the Melissa figure to contextualize her appearance within the framework he'd already invented of reincarnated people on the bus with him. 
Wouldn't that neatly explain why the figure that comes out to stop Anthony from killing herself first looks like Melissa, and then turns into Megan? In every other ending, all of the fantasy characters disappear in the last shots as Anthony learns the truth about what happened. But in this ending, when Melissa disappears, Megan doesn't go anywhere. She's still there all the way through the final shot. What conclusion do we come to? She didn't disappear because she's actually there. The already unstable Anthony drove into Little Hope, a psychotic break starting. Then Megan's spirit reached out to him, wanting him to finally come to terms with how he caused the fire. He interprets the ghost as part of his reincarnation delusion, creating the character of Melissa, and then goes through all of his ordeals that night, with every bit of the delusion built around creating a villain in the story of his family's deaths. And if he holds to that fiction, he either lives in a false delusion or dies at his own hands. But if he actually does what Megan's spirit wants and confronts the truth that the fire was his fault, he again falls into despair and tries to kill himself. But this time Megan reaches out and touches him, forgiving him not just for starting the fire, but for spending the last 40 years hating her for something that wasn't her fault. Is the Anthony in this ending happy? No, but he's faced the truth and he has every chance of being able to move forward and build on this new foundation of honesty with himself. So, is this what really happened? Almost certainly, because we actually see Megan's ghost in one other ending. When Anthony falls into despair and kills himself, in the moment he pulls the trigger, Megan's ghost appears, screaming at him, apparently in an effort to stop him from killing himself. Note that, like in the Megan Saves Him ending, this is clearly Megan, not Melissa, doing the screaming. But this version is badly burned, likely because Anthony hasn't accepted his responsibility for the fire in this ending, and he continues to blame her. This means that she can't reach out in time to save him, she can only witness his death. And considering that Anthony's entire Little Hope experience was likely caused by an attempt by Megan's spirit to convince Anthony to move on, this ending becomes even more tragic in retrospect. That's it for this video, thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks to my patrons Desire, Marissa, and Joanne, if you want to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below the video, so you can donate too. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered in one of these videos, let me know in the comments section and I'll see what I can do. See you back here for the next thing, but until then, au revoir.